Perfect. Okay, everybody. Um, welcome to our last of the season, um, Chef Look Cooks. Uh, our lookalike series continues today. Uh, we're going to do two lookalikes. We're going to do a ceviche using uh, hearts of palm instead of whitefish. So that's going to look almost the exact same as like a fluke ceviche or a literal white fish ceviche would look. Um, but it's going to taste a little bit sweeter, um, and we are going to try and sort of replicate that that ocean fishy flavor with some nori today. Um, this is an optional choice for those who want to skip that and want to go more sort of lean into the the flavor of the hearts of palm. But um, but I think it's going to be fun, and it kind of makes it look like a nice little garnish. Um, and then we're going to do a guacamole using green peas um, entirely. There's a lot of recipes that add green peas to guacamole with the avocado, but this one um, is going to take out the avocado entirely, um, and it should taste. Pretty dang good. The cilantro and lime juice um, and tomatoes and onions that we put in there are going to sort of bring it into that like classic sort of guacamole flavor that we're used to. Uh, it's going to be a lot sweeter, obviously, because um, much more sugar in these than there is in avocado um, and a decent amount less fatty, um, which is a bonus as far as health is concerned. But um, all, it's going to definitely be different, but it's going to be just as good. Um, I've never done this before. I'm really excited to experiment with you guys today. Um, I was going to try it pre previous, but I was like, you know, what? it'll be more fun if we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and uh, and it should be really, really good. Uh, it's going to be different, but um, I'm very excited for this for the future because I unfortunately can't eat avocado anymore, um, although I am going to try again shortly. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, we're going to jump right in. Um, we're going to make the ceviche first so it has some time to sort of hang out and marinate together. Um, a lot of raw veggies in there with the onions and tomatoes and cucumbers. So we want that uh, to have some time in the acid. Uh, and with the hearts of palm and with the nori to sort of let those flavors blend. So we're going to jump. What about, uh, I, I don't like cilantro. Oh, yeah, don't you worry. I'm going to take some out before uh, oh, for okay. you. Yeah, don't you worry. You're not going to see cilantro today. Okay. Well, you're going to see it, but you're not going to see it in your food. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's Thank the you. first thing I'm doing. Don't you worry. See if I, I, and does anybody else not like cilantro But while we're, while we're here? Okay, we're good. Great. Beautiful. Um, so we're going to jump right in. We're going to start with our onion um, just so we can start uh, to get that sort of marinating uh, in the acid. That is probably going to be the most like intensely flavored. Um, this is my lime juice I did before, just to make sure. Um, I would not buy bottled lime juice. Um, you can if you're in a pinch, but um, for ceviche especially, fresh lime juice is really important because it's a lot more acidic. It's a lot more flavorful. Um, it's everything you want. Um, this is going to be one of our main flavors, so we want to make sure that it is a star of the show. And so fresh limes are going to uh, bring this to just a, a much higher level. So that's what we're going to go for today. Um, you can still use uh, canned uh, lime juice. Maybe I'd put a little extra vinegar in there just to like up that acidity. Uh, yeah, question. Um, once you squeeze the lime juice, how long will it last in your refrigerator? Yeah, so I just did this maybe like 20 minutes ago, so it's fine. But if I was going to keep it for longer than an hour, I'd probably put a lid on it. Um, it's super acidic, so it's not really going to oxidize per se. Um, but if you, if you, the oxygen that's going in there is going to be bringing flavors and stuff with it. So we'll start to sort of like flatten out and mellow out, uh, which is exactly what we don't want. So we want to keep it nice and um, nice and uh, covered if we're like keeping it for longer than an hour but like I said I just did these about 20 minutes ago so they, they're usually fine um, but once you have it juiced and you have it covered I mean realistically it's going to last until it molds not much wants to grow in lime juice that's part of why we're using it in this dish it's, it's sort of a um, our sterilizer it sort of cooks and sort of kills a lot of the bacteria that we'd likely want to um, be dealing with with raw fish if we were using raw fish um, so we are going to try and make this uh, big old onion as small as possible and so uh, we're going to do um, a technique I've done before with shallots, uh, sort of a brunoise technique. Um, what we're going to do is an onion instead. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit easier to sort of see what we're doing, um, and it's also going to be a little bit easier to cut. So uh, we want to leave the root end on. That's going to make our life really easy when we go to cut this so it won't be falling apart. Um, and we're just going to cut this entire thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the entire thing later. Um, you know, the, both recipes call for half of a small onion. Um, I'm going to double the ceviche recipe to make sure we have enough to eat today. Um, so I just got like, you know, a large onion just to make sure I had enough. Um, we'll sort of play it by ear when it comes to the guacamole. Uh, the onion in this, uh, in both these dishes is sort of a seasoning agent. Um, you know, ceviche classically is fish, onions, and acid, and that's it. Um, you know, everything else that gets added, the cilantro and the jalapenos and tomatoes, cucumbers, that's all just like different variations from different um, people who have decided that's going to taste good with my fish. But at its core, it's fish and acid and onions. Um, the onions and the citrus were both sort of brought over by European settlers and, you know, eating raw fish had been sort of a part of the culture for a long time. Uh, but the concept of trying to like preserve it and make it last for a lot longer. Um, we're talking, sorry, we're talking about South America, specifically Peru is where ceviche tends to sort of, um, get its, its start. That's where a lot of people are just like Peru is like the, the homeland of, of ceviche. 
Um, but the citrus and the onion specifically sort of added and sort of elevated this like, you know, just eating raw fish to like a whole nother level of, uh, of deliciousness, honestly. Um, and it sort of made its way north from there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we wanna cut these little rings uh, this way so that when we cut down, um, we're not left with this weird sort of side bit. Um, if you cut down here, you can't really cut into that. So you end up with big pieces and we don't want big pieces. We don't want a lot of onion when we're taking bites of our fish. Well, in this case, it's not fish, but um, we want the onion to be a flavoring agent to the sauce. It's gonna sort of mellow it out, sweeten it out, give it a little bit of like that sort of um, oniony spice. Um, but we don't want it to be, we don't want our breath to smell super bad afterwards. So the smaller the pieces, the faster they're gonna cook in the acid and the less um, sort of intense they're gonna be when we go to eat them. So um, the way we do that is we're gonna slice um, this three different times and that's gonna make a very, very nice tiny dice. And so we're gonna slice not all the way through. You wanna make sure your fingers are out of the way. And some of you have seen me do this a bunch of different times, but it's, uh, you know, it can be a lot more fun to sort of see it in person. And so when you're done, you basically got these sort of layers and uh, you know, each one of these now is sort of a stick. And if you remember from before, when I was doing a thousand beats, uh, sticks are your first process and then um, you cut the sticks into, um, into dices. And so in this situation, um, you know, I got a stick off this side, but on the top, we don't have sticks. So we still need to do another cut here and we're going to cut down this time. And every time you do this, you don't want to cut all the way through. You want to um, leave it small enough so that it is all still attached to that root. And that's going to make our life a lot easier when we get to this stage where we take all of these sticks now. Now this has been cut all sorts of ways and it's just a whole bunch of little sticks, but it's still held together because of that root. And we're going to come back here and we're just going to shave off as little as possible as we can from this edge and we're going to end up with a really really nice dice as all that comes off of this end. and if anything sort of like slips past your knife which i'm sure you guys are seeing a little bit on the sides there just ignore it we're not going to bother with it this is um a more wasteful way to use an onion like i won't use this because i don't like the sort of size of it and any of these weird pieces i'll throw away but if you know you're making stock or if you're going to do like a um, like a stir fry later, just you know, throw this to the side and use it. Um, it's, it's definitely still good. Um, but for this application where we really, really, really care about the texture of these onions, we're going to just toss it. So I'm going to do that again here. You cut most of the way through on the top. And depending on the size of your onion, it's usually three or four. I think I did a little big one there. Let's see if we can get another cut in there. Whoops. <laughs> cut a little wedge out. That's okay. And then um, we come down to the top. Basically just pre-dicing this while it's still attached to the root. Uh, and then all we really need to do here is just sort of shave off those, um, those little pieces that we set up for ourselves. We're making quite a lot of ceviche. I know this looks like a lot of onion. It probably is way more than we need. So, but we are making a good amount. So um, you know, some of this will go in the ceviche. Some of it will go in the guacamole. Um, and between both of those, I think um, we'll even still have some left over. For a garnish if we want to, um, if you really, really like onion, you know, you toss a little extra on your ceviche. It's, um, there's, I've definitely had ceviches that were literally just onion, fish, and lime juice and nothing else, and they're still delicious. I mean, I love onions, so. Um, okay, so this is going to be our ceviche bowl. Um, a half of an onion is about a half a cup-ish, so we're going to use that as our measuring uh, agent here. And so we're going to do a full cup into here, and then I'm just going to grab for my leftovers and get those out of the way till we get into guacamole land. Okay, lovely. So there is our onion. And then uh, we're going to take some lime juice. And again, um, this says uh, four limes. So that's for me... Um, about a quarter cup of juice. Yes. How do you make juice from a fresh lime? Uh, great, yeah. Um, I, let me show you, actually. I have a fresh lime right here. So for me, uh, it's all about the roll method. Um, I take my lime. Uh, I have the root and the stem side. Um, and then I just want to crush it, basically. And so this is, I'm sort of pre-juicing it. So, um, so you don't stick it in the microwave? You can microwave it, but um, I, I generally don't... Um, uh, it's not going to like hurt anything, but a microwave works really good too. It's basically the same similar process. You're trying to break down the cell walls of the little, I think they're called pistules that are in there. Um, so this feels like pretty soft right now. It's basically just a complete um, mess in there. And so now I cut it in half and I like to cut it in half um, so you can sort of see the rounds. 
this lime's actually not that good, so we might not juice it. Um, and then uh, from there, it's like it's super soft, and the juice just um, okay. here. Uh, yeah, I'll just do it on the board. You can see it's like it comes out pretty good, and um, I'll just sort of like um, I sort of rotate my fingers as I'm doing it like that to really like crush. I don't know if you can see that up there. Um, and if, then if you do microwave it, how many seconds? I wouldn't go over ten, probably. It doesn't really need a lot. It really just needs to sort of um, activate the juices. Because um, any more than that, you're probably going to be cooking it. And, um, you know, cooked lime juice is okay, but it's not, you know, for this application for sure, it's um, it's kind of outside of what we're looking for. Um, so I wouldn't go, I would start with 10 maybe and see how it goes. But um, that's worth an experiment maybe, just sort of seeing um, what the, how things go. Uh, so back to, yeah? And how, what oh, yeah. did you see that you said it was a bad line? Oh, yeah, there's is a brown spot on it. So, like, it's not, it's going to be fine, but, like, if I was cooking especially, but for something like this where the lime is so important to our flavor profile. Inside? Yeah, yeah. So oh. there was just, like, the pith um, in on one side of it was just kind of brown and bruised, uh, you know, and I, I've eaten plenty of old limes, um, and they just have a very particular flavor. They get, like, I don't know, like, weird. Uh, but they're still limey, but they also, like, have this, like, sort of background note of, of sort of not greatness. Um, and so we're just trying to avoid that, basically. Um, but, you know, I would still have used that if I was, like, making, like, a big batch of, like, limeade or something like that. It would have gotten lost. But for this, I just don't want it to sort of ruin the batch. Um, so we are looking for four limes, which is about a quarter cup of juice. And so we're going to do a half cup of juice here um, in with these onions. Perfect. And we're just going to stir that up and let that start sort of marinating and cooking, more importantly. Um, if I was doing fish, I would have the fish in here at the same time. I would be cutting my fish right now and just tossing it right in there. The fish and the onions are the thing that need to be in the juice for the longest. And so those are the things you want to get in the juice the fastest. Um, and so right now I'm just breaking them up and making sure there's, um, none of those pieces are stuck together. Uh, and that is great. We are going to hit this with just a little bit of salt right now. Um, salt will help the, uh, the limes or the onions to break down their, uh, their cell walls and release some of their juices and to cook faster. I mean, it also tastes good, so that's nice. But just a little bit there, we don't need much. Um, the, uh, uh, the hearts of palm have a decent amount of salt in them, and then if we were using fish, obviously there'd be a decent amount as well. Um, if I was cooking this, you know, like uh, next to the ocean, I'd probably just put a little seawater in there personally. That'd be pretty tasty. Um, okay, lovely. So we've got that good to go. Um, we're just gonna start doing our veggies. Probably we're gonna start with our hardest vegetable first. We're gonna work our way to the softest, and then the last thing we'll put in there will be the hearts of palm. We'll see what those guys look like. So I've got an English cucumber here. These things are great because they're seedless um, and they are just like huge and usually pretty cheap depending on where you get them. Um, once we get into cucumber season, I really like going to like a local farm to get cucumbers, but in the off season, like these are my favorite thing to eat. Um, I like to put them with like hot rice. I'll do like a sesame um, sesame salad with some hot rice is really tasty. Um, I just love cucumbers. So You're not feeling them? No, no. Uh, so another good thing about the English cucumber is they have very soft flesh. Um, so you don't have to peel them. Um, and I really like the way the green looks in here as well. Um, if I got, I was using like a regular seedless cucumber or seed, um, you know, like a slicing cucumber, I would probably um, at least do three peels. Because um, even like a normal cucumber has decent flesh, it tastes nice. But um, it's, if you have like a whole piece like this, it tends to be like hard to chew. So I like to like, um, if I had a whole cucumber, I'll go sort of one, two, three. I'll kind of make some stripes and that kind of breaks up the fiber and makes it easier to digest and to chew more than anything else. Um, so we're looking for cubes here. Um, we want everything in here to be about the same size. So um, I'm assuming the hearts of palm are going to be about a half an inch cube once I take them out of here. Um, so I'm going to do something kind of similar with this. So I, I have these uh, and then I'm going to go here and I'm just going to third them. And so that's going to give us sort of a stick that's looking about the right size. And then from here, I'm going to cut, um, you know, nice and thin there. And that's going to give us something that'll fit in our mouth pretty well. Um, and we'll, we'll cook it a decent uh, amount, but we'll still be a cucumber when we're done. We don't, um, we don't want these to be like pickles, you know, when we're, uh, when we're finished. So they want to have a little bit of mass just to sort of protect themselves from the juice. We'll pop over here and cut these fairly thin. So yeah, so that's about the right size we're looking for. That's what we want everything to be uh, in this. In general, um, especially for ceviches, uh, well, it doesn't have to be that way. A lot of times um, you'll see ceviches that are just like vastly different. You'll have big strips of onion and big chunks of fish. It just depends on who's making it um, and how sort of, uh, you know, what kind of level of, uh, of food. But I, I'm used to, you sort of, especially lately, sort of more high class um, cooking. And so everything being the same size, really, it's, it gets you in a sort of um, 
you, you eat with your eyes first is what they say. And so anytime you can sort of um, give that, that show to people, um, it is going to make things um, that much more tasty. Yes? It did, yeah. I took the plastic off before we started. No, I understand. It. What, what I was going to ask you, since you're not peeling it, is how do you wash it for you before you... Yeah, I just, I just, um, you know, under underwater, gave it a little sort of like rub down. Um, just, oh, soap or yeah, I, I didn't use soap, um, but I mean, you definitely can uh, if you are uh, worried about anything going on with them. But these, these guys particularly, I are usually hydroponically grown, so you don't have to worry a lot about um, oh. sort of what okay. is going on with them. I think that is a lot of times they're sold as hydroponic cucumbers instead of English cucumbers, um, but uh, but that is just the sort of the growing process with them. You can also use the smaller um, Persian cucumbers, which are very similar to this. They have the same sort of thinner flesh, um, and they're little tiny guys. And those are nice because you can just kind of quarter them and, uh, and then chop them up like this, which is, makes your life a little bit easier. And so that was about a cup um, and a half, I would say, of cucumber, just as far as, like, you know, um, if you want to uh, use pre-chopped cucumber for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But, um, you, uh, I don't know where you'd even get that, honestly. <laughs> what are we talking about over here? Uh, okay, lovely. So we're going to jump on to our next one. Um, we're going to do the jalapeno. And I'm going to give this a quick little toss just to get the cucumbers in there. Um, we talked about jalapeno last time, spice levels. Everybody feels pretty good about spice. I'm going to start with half, and we can all look at what that looks like, and then we can decide if we want to put the other half in there. Um, we're going to not use the seeds, though. Um, so if I was cooking this for myself, I'd put this entire thing in there. And um, when I got ceviches in Mexico, um, it would often just be like whole pieces of, of jalapeno in there, not even diced fine, and it was so good. Um, but we're not going to do that to you guys today. Um, even if you like spice, it's um, it's usually jalapenos can be one of the more aggressive. Um, not that they they have the most capsaicin in them, but because of their uh, their water content, they can actually be a lot more um, intense than a normal than it, even like a habanero would be is because habaneros are very thin fleshed um, they don't have tons of water it's really just capsaicin hitting you but when with a jalapeno not only do you get the spicy but you get the water and water actually kind of like ups the pain level because your body your body sort of freaks out it, it doesn't like that the the um i can't remember the specific science behind it but essentially water is bad if you're ever having a spicy mouth you want fat in there you want oil you want um alcohol also will help um, and or uh, milk. That's why milk is classic leaven because the milk fat really um, takes it dissolves the capsaicin and brings it into your stomach away from uh, your much more sensitive mouth um, cells. Uh, but water doesn't do any of that. Water just like gives you false relief and then it comes back even worse when it when, when it hits you. So um, the water in this kind of works against it. Um, I've I've had much worse experiences eating habanero or jalapenos than I have habaneros. So um, and I always kind of wondered why. And one chef was just like, "It's the water, dude." And so. Um, so we, uh, I have them like that, and that was pretty easy. I eat a lot of spicy food, so I'm not going to even bother washing my hands right now. I just, like, they, it doesn't even, like, tingle my fingers at all. But um, use a glove if you're worried about it, or make sure you wash your hands right after. I don't know if you watched how I did that, but I started at the base of the jalapeno here, and I sort of picked at the, uh, the little white bits. And once the white bits are free, you can kind of just, like, use your thumb to scoop the rest out. I did it much better on the first one, but um, that is the easiest way to get seeds out of the jalapeno. I would say, and you mainly you'd ever want to do that a bunch of times if you're making like poppers. Uh, if you like jalapeno poppers, that's uh, something you often want to do is get this out of here and then you fill it with like a nice cream cheese filling or something. Um, so we've got these nice little strips as per usual. Whoops. How's everybody feeling right now? Does everybody want me to put the other half in there? No. Yes. No. Okay, I got, all I got was one no. I'll put these on the side. You can sprinkle it on top. We'll have it with the cilantro. <laughs> Okay, and we're gonna do nice, nice, tiny, tiny, tiny dice here. Cause this is more than anything else, a flavoring. We don't wanna get a piece of jalapeno. Um, I mean, I do, but we we don't as a collective. Um, it's gonna just, you know, it's gonna be bitter. Um, generally spicy peppers tend to be pretty bitter. Again, habaneras are like a weird beast in that regard. They're incredibly sweet and amazing. Um, and so we're gonna put that in. That should be plenty, honestly. It's gonna give us a nice sort of um, planty bite and uh, it's just gonna be absolutely delicious. And so. I, um, I cut the, the strips this way the first time um, because I didn't want the skin um, to sort of keep them together. I actually kind of trust this knife, so I'm going to go this way this time. This is actually easier. Um, you're going into the soft flesh first, and this is how you would normally cut my like bell peppers. Um, but jalapeno is kind of very thick flesh, and so if you do that, you don't get through the whole way, and you get this like weird-looking like half-cut piece of, uh, of pepper that it doesn't really work so well in ceviche. So, um, but this knife is doing really, really good for me today, so I'm just going to keep doing that. And we're just making sure to keep our fingers out of the way. 
nice little rock chop right here. This is why I like this kind of knife because you've got a, a sort of flat area here where you can just press chop and then um, the tip, if you sort of implement it, you can do a little rock chop um, for, for smaller stuff like this. Okay, we're just gonna pop that over there, get a little bowl for that. We have all sorts of like sort of accoutrements that you can choose yourself. That'd be fun, a little ceviche bar. I hadn't, hadn't really thought about that, but that'd be like super easy. You just have like a bunch of different acids and um, a bunch of different fish. And you just sort of put everything you want in a bowl and mix it up. I'm on board. Um, okay, we're gonna jump into tomatoes now. I just wanna double check my amount. I can't remember if there's more tomatoes in this one. There is. Okay, so we're gonna use four in this one actually. Um, and so tomatoes, we want that same size dice as the cucumber. I'm just gonna pop one on the board here as sort of a reminder to myself. Um, so what, the way I like to slice tomatoes like this, um, they're kind of crazy. They kind of have like a flat side, which is nice. I usually want to have a flat side when I'm working with something slippery like this. Um, but I don't really like, I don't like people will tell you to like core the tomato and you can do that. Um, but I usually skip that. I just kind of cut the top off like that and I get a really nice flat piece. Um, so I'm going to do that to all my tomatoes right now. And we don't really want, um, the inside uh, of the tomatoes. So that's something we're actually going to get rid of right now. Um, all the seeds and the juice is really, really tasty. Um, I like it for sauces. I like it in pretty much everything, but in ceviche, I just want the, the pithy body. I don't want to add tomato juice to this. Um, there's nothing wrong with like a tomato based ceviche. You can do it, but for this particular dish, it's not like what we're going for. Um, tomatoes are added in here as more of like a garnish than a, um, a sort of flavoring aspect. And so what we're going to do is there's just these little pockets of juice in here and you're just going to sort of get your finger in there and just sort of, just sort of juice them out. Um, and that's going to get you um, these sort of nice cavities. I should probably do this into a bowl. I'm on hinge today. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> this cutting board has seen uh, so many strange things. I juiced the lime right onto it earlier. Uh, okay, so we're going to do that the right way this time. Um, and sometimes there's you know there's more than two pockets, um, but you just want to sort of push you push your finger in there. It's very I don't know if you saw that one sort of shoot out. It's very sort of messy. Um, and this is great. You can use this um, strain off the seeds. This is great for like mixers for. Um, for Bloody Marys or, um, you know, it just like you can put it in your tomato sauce or on pizza if you're doing pizza. Um, it's really, really tasty and delicious. It's basically like the most pure tomato juice you can get. No, no fiber whatsoever. It's just, just juice and water and seed and uh, absolute tomato deliciousness. Um, but again, we don't really want that in this. We don't want that extra juice. Um, we don't really want the seeds either. They, we just want the flesh. While I'm here, I may as well do these two we're going to do the same thing for the guacamole and that's another good reason to cut off this top not only does it give you that flat area but it gives you access to the cavities that the uh, the juice is in gonna have to clean up later <laughs> yeah it's crazy right i mean that definitely worth worthwhile getting the bowl um these these ones are like really intense too um i used to do this a lot uh we would uh, we would use this at the bar at one of the restaurants i worked at and so we'd do this and then we'd, um, we'd use all the tomatoes for, uh, for stacking it, which was awesome. <laughs> okay, perfect. So those are going to be for later. This is going to be a little drink maybe for somebody, if anybody wants tomato juice. Um, and we will start um, cutting these up. So first things first, I'm going to sort of uh, take off the tomato that's on these tops. And so uh, the way I do that is I just want to cut around that little center bit there. And this is how I core an apple too. Um, if you ever want a quick way to do an apple. You don't have to do anything. You just put the little stem right up. Just imagine this is an apple and you just cut off um, two sort of big flanks and one little tiny flank and the core stays behind. Um, and all you get is beautiful apple flesh left over. Um, so that's a really nice sort of quick way to cut an apple if you ever want to core one out. Um, I really like putting apples in all sorts of weird things. So uh, I'm using apples probably more than a lot of people, but that's the easiest way to get the core out. Uh, and then for a tomato, same deal. Sweet. So now we've got these little pieces here and we're just going to cut those into our little cubes and then it'll be a lot faster with the other ones. But you know me, I just, um, I hate waste. So I always try and find every way to use every bit of tomato I can. We're just stacking these up. Is that not serrated? This is not serrated. It's just pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. Um, a good sharp, to sharp knife will cut through tomatoes. It's actually a really good test. Um, a lot of times you'll see people who are making knives will do that. They'll, they'll do, um, the sort of uh, they'll take a really sharp knife and they'll just cut a little slice off the top of a tomato without 
even touching the tomato. We're not. This is not that sharp, <laughs> uh, as you can see. <laughs> but um, but it's still sharp enough to go through the flesh, and that's that's why I know this thing has been um, well taken care of recently. So um, okay, cool. So there's the first bits of our tomato. We'll just get those off our board. And that's our size guide. So now um, basically we want to cut this into sort of a stack, a little burger stack. And so we're looking for it to be about a half inch wide. So that should be two cuts for us. And then we'll just leave that stacked. Again, this is probably gonna be pretty similar, two cuts. You can cut that way or you can cut like we cut the onion, like this. Um, I always just have a little more daring, I guess. But if you're worried about the knife, that is definitely the way to do it. Um, and again, we're just looking for a little burger stacks. Okay, now that we've got burger stacks, we just want to um, dice this. And so this can be get, get a little bit awkward if um, your knife isn't super sharp. Serrated knife will be great for this because you're not going to put a lot of tension in it. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to just sort of get yourself in here. You want to try and hold it together the whole time, if possible. Knife. I, I was talking so good about this knife and then it just decided it didn't like me. Mm -hmm. It just, I swear, it just got more dull. Probably because I keep scraping it on the cutting board. So now the, hopefully this is more together. And you just want to come the other way and you're going to end up with nice cubes of tomato. Uh, and it, if you've watched me cut enough things here, you've seen that it's, it's usually pretty much the same process depending on what we're doing. We're either doing the sticks, uh, the, the sort of planks to sticks method. And this is, this is kind of a similar, a similar situation of planks to sticks. Um, this is our sort of, we were in planks method and now we're on, um, we're on sticks right here. There's bigger sticks and it's kind of awkward because it's round. But um, anything that's round you can cut like this. Uh, I do this a lot for cabbage. Um, I'll do this obviously for onions. It works really, really well for. Um, but it's just a good technique to have um, in your pocket if you ever need to make cubes of something. Get off. Ooh, this one's messy. All right, so not perfect, you know. <laughs> this one is getting up being a. Being a little, uh, little rebel. That's okay. okay. All right, we'll clear ourselves off here again. I did forget to stir that to just to get those um, jalapenos in there, but that's okay. We'll give it a little stir after this. Double check we got all of our ingredients in there. Okay. Just get that off for now. Lovely. Just gonna give us a quick stir. Start to get that lime juice over there. Those onions are definitely nice and cooked by now, which is good. And this is like a salsa. You're done right now. You can just stir this if you want. Um, but obviously, we're gonna put some fish in there, and it, uh, well, some again. I keep saying fish, but you know. Um, got myself tricked. We're gonna put some uh, some hearts of palm in there and really uh, really take it to another level. Smells good. Okay, let's just double check and see. We've got everything. Hearts of palm are not in there yet. We've got some nori we're gonna want to put in there. Limes are in there. Onions in there. Cucumbers in there. Tomatoes, jalapeno, cilantro is in my fridge. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there um, just to sort of um, give it a nice little uh, coating. Um, again, we're not using like fish. You could use a fatty fish in here. I'm just going to sort of eyeball it. It's going to be about two tablespoons, though. Yeah, a little more. It's just going to um, give it a nice sort of more dressing. Uh, a dressing here is going to be good. Was that extra virgin? Yeah, that was uh, extra virgin. It, you don't have to. You can use any olive oil. You could use like a neutral if you wanted to. Um, in fact, honestly, like normal olive oil might be better just because extra virgin has a little more flavor, but I think it's going to be okay. And that's looking great already. We've got some nice juices in the bottom. So that's some of the cucumbers, some of the onion, obviously all that lime as well. Um, it's everything we could want in one place. Uh, great. So that is basically everything. I'm going to get these open and I'm going to crack this nori. So I got a little snack pack of nori. Um, this would be better probably if you had large pieces. Um, but no, oh, nori is a, um, it's a type of seaweed. Um, so it is, uh, it is a seaweed that they put on sushi, um, and they make these little snack packs. This is actually a pretty dense amount of snacks, which is nice. Um, so uh, normally we'd use like a whole sheet, which is about like 
you know, it's like that big kind of. Um, so we're just gonna, we're doubling this, so I think this will be perfect amount actually. Um, so one of those little snack packs of Nori is actually the perfect replacement. I'm just gonna make this, get this as dry as possible. What's that? Where did you buy that? I got it right at Stop and Shop. It's in the, um, it's in the uh, international food aisle. Um, just like, uh, which I guess is like right sort of by the registers now. Um, and it's just in those little plastic patches, pouches. Um, okay, so we're going to cut this um, and we're going to do, you know, we the already in plank style. So we're just going to stick them and then uh, we're going to dice them. And we want this pretty small because, again, this is going to be a flavoring agent. Um, but we do want it to be at least, you know, a decent size just so we can see it in there. It's going to be a nice kind of garnish. Uh, and it's really going to kind of bring our flavor home as well. Um, you know, if you had fish, you wouldn't need this. Um, although, honestly, there would no reason you shouldn't put it in there if you want to, um, if you're doing a fish ceviche. But what this is going to bring is going to bring us that sort of sea flavor that we're looking for. Nothing in here has even come close to the ocean. And so um, this is going to really give us that sort of fishy, fishy flavor that's going to make this um, feel and taste a little bit more um, recognizable as, um, as ceviche. This one's seasoned with sea salt also, which is nice. So it's going to really add a nice little bit of seasoning in there as well on top of it. Um, we'll double check this and probably put some more salt in there ourselves. And a little bit of pepper as well. Okay, that's the nori. Let's get that in there. Looking good. All right, so that's our nori. We'll let that just hang for the moment. The juice is already starting to, it's starting to sort of come up. The more veggies are releasing their juices, everything is good. Um, we're gonna take a look at these hearts of palm and see what we got ourselves into. Mm -hmm. I have never bought hearts of palm from the grocery store. Um, they've always kind of like randomly fallen into my life from different sources. Um, so this is gonna be my first time using these ones. Let's see what they look like. They're pre-cut, oh, they look nice. That's like maybe even the right size. We might not even do anything. Oh, they're a little big. Oh, well. That's okay. We'll just do a quick little halve on them. They smell good. Are you straining them, Christopher, so they're not so salty? Uh, you know, I'm just straining them because um, we don't want the, the juice from them. It's um, uh, because they're hearts of palm and not fish, like what we want. Um, these are sort of designed for a different application than this, so they taste really like hearts of palm. Um, we want to try and get them to taste as little like hearts of palm as possible <laughs> so that we can make them taste like fish. Um, and so uh, we're not only going to strain the liquid off, but we are going to rinse them really quickly as well just to get all that cooking liquid off. Uh, and that's going to help us uh, sort of have the ability to re-flavor them as we, we want. <coughs> See how they are? Mm -hmm. They're pretty tasty. It's a nice, this is a nice company. I think I like these guys. So again, these are a little bit sweeter. They kind of taste like, um, like artichokes almost. Um, for those of you who haven't had them before, you are about to all eat them. Um, and just for, there's a couple big pieces in there, but I'm not too concerned about it. Ceviche, like I said, sometimes has big pieces. Even that's like not super bad though. So I think I'm just going to put them in there. We're going to go for it. They're going right in there. Oh, this piece needs to be cut. <laughs> Get in there. Perfect. Okay. So this is kind of it already is making me think about like fish. Like this just looks like a bunch of nice little like acid cooked fish. Oh, they get this same sort of um, like milky white uh, outside when they when um, they get cooked from lime juice or whatever other acid you're using. Um, and I really kind of it's fun seeing it on the the hearts of palm because it just like brings me back to my ceviche days. I'm just making sure any of these really big ones get a little little cut on them. But that looks pretty good. I think we're just gonna stick with that. Lovely. So we'll give this a nice little stir. And um, usually the, the hearts of palm has a, have a pretty good amount of um, fiber to them. So when they do break apart, they break apart a lot like fish, which is kind of nice too. Um, so I really like that it's it texture wise. Um, they are, they're not as gonna be as, um, as sort of, not squishy, but they're not gonna have the same mouth feel, unfortunately, but they are gonna like look like fish, which is kind of fun. I like that concept. So we're just gonna give this a nice little Stir. We are kind of folding this instead of stirring it just because we don't want to break up that fish if we can help it. I'm just going to keep saying fish even though we all know it's not. Just really like sell the illusion completely. Um, then I'm probably going to put a little salt and pepper in here. I'm going to take a quick little taste and just see 
what we're looking at. As far as flavor, looks great. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, so definitely some salt. Not much though, it's pretty good. Wow, I like that a lot. It's just gonna get better as it sits. And definitely a little bit of pepper. And then the cilantro is really going to also bring this um, home for sure. I'm going to put a little bit more lime juice in there. Um, we still have plenty. Let's see. Just make sure we have enough for our guacamole. Perfect. I'm actually even going to juice a couple more. Just because um, somehow that's not enough lime juice. <laughs> so I would maybe even up the lime juice again. That could just be me. Um, and it could be the way the hearts of palm are interacting. But if this was fish, for sure, I'd want more lime juice in there as well. So... I am going to put it in there, make it better. Okay, lovely. I, this is so much fun. I'm just, <laughs> so I've, I've made a lot of ceviche in the past, ceviche in the past, I've eaten a lot of ceviche, and um, this just looks, <laughs> it looks so much like ceviche, it's so cool. Um, and it tastes pretty close too. Definitely hearts of palm though. You'll be able to um, tell once we get to that point. All right, so we're gonna give this another little stir. I'm gonna take some out. So we have some non cilantro version. And then um, I'll pop the cilantro in there and let it hang out. Make sure we got plenty. Okay, lovely. And then we're gonna use about um, two thirds of this cilantro. Um, the rest is gonna go into the guacamole. I did right now. <laughs> okay, I need a fresh spoon though. Yeah, I, I probably would. Um, I would do it the day before, at least like the morning before the party, if it was doing like an afternoon party. Mm -hmm. All right, we are in a good spot. That's gonna hang out and get happy. And we're gonna make our guacamole, which is gonna be really, really quick compared to what we just did. <laughs> Yeah, as long as it's aluminum, you don't want to. You wouldn't want to do um, any reactive metals. Um, like if you had, I don't know. That that's this is aluminum bowl. Any aluminum bowls should be fine. Nothing should ever react with that. Uh, but there definitely are bowls that are mixed or, or you know, not hybrids. Uh, uh, alloys that I would definitely um, avoid. But yeah, if you haven't had any problems before, you can usually tell if your if your bowl has like a patina. On the inside, like weird sort of colorations, that means it's probably reactive, and so you should avoid it. Stainless than aluminum. Stainless, thank you, yes. <laughs> stainless, not aluminum, because aluminum is reactive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Derp. <laughs> right, yeah. Stainless is where you're safe. Um, aluminum is where you are not safe. So we're going to jump right into the guacamole. Um, this one is pretty easy. It's, um, again, haven't done it before. These have been sitting out since we started, so they're, they're still a little frozen. They're cold, but they are starting to get soft, which is what we want. Um, you could do it straight from frozen, but you tend to get a little ice crystals which will break the guacamole later. So you want them to be cold, partially frozen, but not completely frozen. Um, and this is actually exactly um, two cups, uh, which is great. So we're gonna put the whole thing in there. Or sorry, uh, four cups? What does it say? Four cups. All right, so sweet. So it's gonna be that. It's gonna be our lime juice. And it's going to be our garlic. I didn't have uh, fresh garlic because they don't sell them. Like, I can't just buy one clove of garlic. So I'm just going to use dried garlic here. Uh, and we are going to use a teaspoon. Uh, so I usually I'd use like maybe half a teaspoon for one clove. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop in. This is a quarter teaspoon spoon. Uh, we've got some cumin. Let's see. Peas, garlic, lime juice, and cumin. Yep. Half 
teaspoon. So again, we're going to do a teaspoon of this. And do two uh, sort of mounding ones. Good enough. And I'm just going to put a little salt in here now because I know it's going to want a little bit at least. Perfect. Let's get this going. Oh yeah, I gotta plug it in. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> Smells good. That's already starting to look good. Nice and bright and green, getting in that sort of guacamole style. And it is gonna have a little bit different texture, but by putting those onions and, um, and uh, tomatoes in there, it's gonna really bring it home to that sort of what we're used to. I'm gonna add a little more juice too. Oh no, it's time to do the thing, maybe one more. So I just added another lime in there because it wasn't really quite um, like liquidy enough and you really wanted to get um, that sort of, there's almost like a gloss to it that, um, that happened while I was putting the lime in there. Um, you want it to be liquid enough that it will, um, it's hard to describe it, there's like a way it looks in the food processor that you know it's, it's getting smooth and sort of, um, uh, and not going to be too chunky. We don't want like a lot of pea chunks in there if we can. Oh, is you, you not see it well already? Is that better? You can see it. Perfect. Okay, that looks good to me. Nice and smooth. Shouldn't be too much pea fiber in there. Um, and you guys can get a chance to sort of see what it looks like. It's nice and bright and green. Everything we want. Smells like peas. <laughs> I love it. I hope it doesn't taste like peas. I mean, I don't mind peas, but I mean, I hope it tastes more like guacamole than, it's obviously just peas right now, really. So um, it's gonna smell like peas, but um, I think the tomatoes and onions are really gonna bring it home. Uh, and the cilantro too. I think that's like one of those big sort of memory flavors that, that, um, that tends to really like bring everything together. Obviously for those of us that can eat it. Um, the only memory cilantro has when you can't, when you have the, the soap thing is that of taking a shower, you know? <laughs> Okay, lovely, lovely. So there is our guacamole. We're gonna go ahead and finish that off with all of our seasonings. We are gonna put some tomato in there, so we'll start with that. And we're gonna cut these a little smaller than we did last time um, because we are sort of thinking about um, where we wanna put uh, this. And this is gonna be you know, more of a, a sort of sauce, potentially on a chip or something like that. And so we would, um, we want them to be nice and small that wouldn't fall off of that chip. So just smaller planks, but um, still the same method. Um, smaller sticks as well. I'm not gonna even try and keep this together because it's just gonna be too small. It's not gonna happen. Okay. And this knife is like, <laughs> You know, I'm just gonna, we're gonna skip the top. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Okay. It's like a business model, right? That like employees perform better when they think they're doing a bad job. As soon as I told the knife it was doing a good job, it was like, nope. <laughs> okay, nice little dice. 
Not ideal. Um, as far as like, you know, this dice, it definitely didn't work out the way I was expecting. You can put these in the food processor as well, since we're already using the food processor, I could have just as easily put the onion, cilantro, um, in, right in the food processor uh, after I was done with the peas. Take the peas out, put them in the food processor, just sort of blitz them a little bit. If you put them in with the peas, because we want the peas to be a complete mash, you're gonna end up with like a really brown looking sludge. It might taste really good. Um, in fact, it probably would taste really good. Um, but it would be like packaged guacamole, you know? like it'd be basically just mush um, with no texture. And so we're, we really want that texture from the tomatoes. And I'm going to try and um, not just like scrape these in here. I don't want as too much of that juice. So I'm going to kind of try and pick them up so I can uh, just get the flesh. Come on. Perfect. <laughs> We already had our onion cut from earlier. I'm just going to double check my recipe here. Peas, garlic, limes, cumin, tomato, red onion. Again, we decided about a half a cup is equal to half an onion. Uh, cilantro, um, hot sauce, don't have any around, so we're not going to use that. And I already put some salt in there. Probably going to want some more. Um, we're just going to stir this up. I mean, it looks like guacamole to me. I don't know about you guys, but like, it looks like guacamole. I, I couldn't tell the difference if I didn't know I just put peas in a food processor like a couple seconds ago. Lovely. So we're just going to take a quick little taste of this, make sure it doesn't need any salt. This is the first time I've ever had this. So. Fingers crossed, guys. Oh, it tastes really good. Okay. I can get behind that. It tasted bad, would you tell us? Yeah, 100%. I'd be like, sorry guys, <laughs> you're gonna have to try it with me though. Um, no, it tastes really good. It's definitely peas, like you can tell it's peas. It's sweet right off the bat instead of um, that sort of like neutral fatty that you get from a guacamole, but um, especially with the cilantro in there, I think that's gonna, as the kids say, slap. Um, okay, let me just put some of this guacamole on the side for Skip, and then we will um, we'll put that cilantro in there and we'll get to uh, get to trying. So I do apologize to you guys. I um, considered getting chips and then when I was at the grocery store, I forgot. So I don't have any chips, but this is, this is you know, ceviche isn't classically necessarily served with chips, so um, it's not the end of the world. I'm just a little sad about it because I did think it would be a good idea and then I failed you all. The beer? We do have some beer in the basement. You want to go get it for you guys? I think it was a two, two, four, six. Yeah, there's 12 of you guys, perfect. <laughs> Um, I think it's Topeka too, what or not Topeka. Um, what are you doing with beer in the basement? Uh, it's from like a program we did, you know, ages ago. It just, it just sort of. We don't really like drink. We can't. We don't you drink it. Drink yeah, exactly. So it's just kind of. Um, it just sits there waiting for the next program where we might need it. Um, or, we're here. Yeah, I mean, hey, listen. I um, we were not authorized to serve alcohol at this event, unfortunately. If I had thought ahead, I would have chips and beer for you guys. But um, we don't have either today, so I'm really failed. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get this plated up and let you guys get a little taste test here, see what you um, see what you all think. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, it's definitely going to be a lot sweeter than um, than what you skip. I'm just going to let you jump in there first if you want to. That's your uh, cilantro-less version. Um, it's going to be sweeter than what you're used to as far as um, ceviche and guacamole because the hearts of palm and the peas obviously have a lot more sugar in them. Um, but overall, it is, I think, going to be a pretty nice combo together. Um, that sort of sweetness is really going to bring it together, actually, um, as a group experience. Okay, you know what, this does want a little more salt. Everybody okay with a little more salt in here? Yeah? It's pretty little salt as is, so... I'm just tasting it and being like, yeah, that could use a little more. Good. Alright, sweet. So, um, if I was doing this, like, at a restaurant, with actual ceviche and guacamole, I'd probably do like a little like quenelle of guacamole on the side here. And so we'll do like little fake quenelles. What's a quenelle? Yeah, what's a quenelle? A quenelle, yeah, okay, so that was the next thing. <laughs> I'm happy you asked, I was just about to say what a quenelle is. So a quenelle is a fancy way of, um, uh, it's basically a football shaped piece of, uh, of I don't know, it kind of looks like that. So the way you normally make quenelles, you have a really clean spoon, 
and you take this the thing and it would have to be more like solid than this and you like you put it up against the side and then you turn it and you put it up against the side and so you get like three sides and then you take it out like that and it looks like it sort of stands on its own that's like actually pretty good honestly um considering that this is like kind of soft guacamole i'm like pretty impressed by that right now um but the idea is that it sort of it looks it's got like kind of like a little mohawk um, but then it's a triangle right so like triangles um squares uh anything that sort of has like equal sides tends to be very like pleasing to the eye so the idea being that like you see it and you're like wow amazing you'll usually see it on desserts um whipped cream is classically very easy to quenell so people will quenell whipped cream on top of things um and it usually goes like on top of something uh, and that little like mohawk is kind of like the telltale sign um, but you want a spoon about this size and you just kind of like swoop. Um, but you you form it first in the bowl and we're kind of just like faking it here obviously Um, so I do a little quenelle inside like this, um, and then I put the ceviche around that and let the quenelle kind of act as like a wall for the juice of the ceviche. And these aren't the most ideal plates, I'll tell you right now. Hopefully they don't soak through on you guys, um, just because you want the juice. So the, the juice that's at the bottom of your ceviche is called leche del tigre. Um, uh, in some places, some places, um, agua chile, uh, which is also the name of the whole dish. Um, and that is like, uh, le leche del tigre is uh, tiger's milk. And so... Um, that's a, a Peruvian um, sort of concept. And the idea is that, uh, you know, if you're like hungover or beat up from a really long day, you go get some ceviche and then you drink, or maybe just drink the leche. Um, and that like, that brings you back to life. Cause it's, you know, it's a lot of acid. It's, it's a lot of, you know, fish juice and, and vegetable juice um, and salt, tons of salt. Cause you know, classically there's a decent amount of salt in uh, the fish and in the ceviche itself. So we're going to make sure you get a decent amount of that juice at least here. So you can try it and get a nice chance to try everything on this plate. And there is going to be leftovers, so please feel free to come for more if you like it enough to try some more. Oh, yeah. And that seaweed's already starting to sort of do its magic and bring a little bit of fishiness into this. I have not, um, though we do have a lot of edible seaweeds here on the island, like a lot actually. Um, we have, uh, and you, you guys can feel free to come on up and start picking up your plates. If you want any extra jalapenos, they're right there. Um, we have, uh, not nori, but we have, um, what's the other one? Kelp. We have really nice kelp that's off of the coast here. We have, um, uh, I think Irish moss exists here. There's like a lot of really good um, seaweeds that you can eat mm -hmm. here. Um, there's like little spaghetti ski seaweed I know is, is edible as well. Um, it's definitely a good place where you can eat seaweed, but I haven't really explored it much. I keep thinking I'm going to, and then I bring it home, and then I don't eat it. So uh, I'm going to have a little plate myself, too, and just see what these are like together, because this is my first time for both of these, and I'm very excited about it. I'm still, like, this just looks so much like fish. It should be delicious. I mean, you know, it might not be exactly what you're expecting, but it's going to be good, I think. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, any white fish would be good. So there's something like um, halibut, uh, fluke. You could use cod, but I usually wouldn't. I just don't usually use, buy cod nowadays. Um, but yeah, halibut for sure would be, like halibut would be a, probably a classic one. If I was like at a restaurant, I'd probably be using halibut just because um, you're always like cutting out like prime steaks of halibut for like the whatever pea risotto dish or whatever it is. And there's always like some scraps that you'll cut up for the ceviche. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just the peas. I didn't put any. Yeah, you didn't. You saw I didn't put any sugar in there. It's sweeter than I thought, actually. And I think if you got different pea varieties, especially if you got fresh peas, I think it would be a little, um, a little maybe less sweet, depending on you know which kind of peas you bought. Um, these are you know. Yeah, yeah. I would blanch them um, and then and then cool them and then you're good to go. Um, I wouldn't use them if you do them too raw. They're gonna have I think too much starch. Um, like raw peas are very starchy. They've got a lot of. Um, oh, uh, well, because when you go to eat this, it'll instead of like, you it'll be sweet like that, but it'll also have kind of like a, like a gritty graininess to it, um, from the starch because the starch will start to coagulate with some of the the. It's just gonna. It shouldn't. It's just gonna taste. Um, I don't know how else to like. 
I'm trying to think like if you ever had like a potato that wasn't fully cooked but was like cooked enough that you could eat yeah. it, it's gonna have that same kind of like oh, okay. like thing going. Like it's almost like crunchy, but yeah, it's hard to describe. They won't blend quite as well either. But so, but a quick blanch should be easy. Um, and then you know you don't even have to ice. Yeah, like so, boiling water, um, like literally 10, 15 seconds, uh, and then out into ice bath, just enough to like kill the starch basically. Because like peas, especially, and a lot of legumes are really, really, really starchy. They um, it's actually you can make uh tofu out of them because they're so starchy you can tofu um, you can make tofu right out of fresh peas you um, you basically just blend them up with water and then you cook them down and the starch from the peas um, thickens it into like a porridge and then you cool that and it turns into tofu it's amazing yeah I, it's like you can do it with um, with uh, lentils um, you can do it with dal as well um, which is sort of just another version of lentils basically any sort of um, pea green peas uh, anything that has that sort of split pea style where it's like two um, Two cotyledon, the the little like the pea, the part of the pea you eat is actually the cotyledon leaves before they sprout. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, snap peas, it'd be so much of a pain to shell them, but yeah, you could you could. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I have sugar this year. I yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, of course. Peas. Yeah, that's and that's why um, you know if you've ever had like split pea and ham soup or split pea soup. Like when you have it the next day, it's like solid mass because that's yeah. all the starch from the peas um, that are sort of solidifying that and, and giving you that sort of cornstarch vibe. Um, it's something I didn't know until recently how starchy peas are, but it's kind of cool. Um, you know, they're a vegetable, but they they're they're very starchy. You know, corn obviously is, is a starch; it's a grain, but um, it's it's got the same sort of vibe. Corn and peas together are like a classic combo, but they're both just like big starchy boys. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's lots more. Please come up if you'd like more. Um, it is the, in fact, it makes me very happy that you do want more. <laughs> the lime is great. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is delicious. Christmas. I'm really excited about this. The, the guacamole so especially, I'm like, I'm going to like triple the amount of cilantro though, mm -hmm. for me. Just about every ingredient in here is some of my favorite. <laughs> Good. Okay. I'm happy you guys like it. And I'm still really impressed at how much those hearts have, like, I keep yeah. looking at this being like, oh, there's fish. <laughs> like, why don't I smell raw fish? And, mm -hmm. Because it's hearts of palm, but... Yeah, but it tastes good. Mm -hmm. I know, it's so good. Did you put garlic in? I did, just a little bit of garlic in the in the guacamole, none in the um in the um, ceviche. You can put gu garlic in the ceviche, but it tends to be really way too intense. Um, you want the chili and the fish to come through more, if possible. When you make guacamole at home, do you put in more garlic in it? Yeah. I'll put in a whole bowl probably yeah. for that much. That's why I'm uh -huh. oh, yeah. um, You can use roasted garlic as well. If you, if you cook the garlic beforehand, you can put more in, which can be really nice. Um, did anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to sort of call it. You guys can obviously keep eating and snacking, but I'll turn off the video. And um, we can uh, we can say goodbye to this lovely program. I know. It's coming back in the fall. It's not going away forever. Um, so in the summer, we, this program is going to be replaced with um, our uh, Saltwater Wednesdays. So we'll be doing um, shellfish. That's kind of going to be our new vibe for Saltwater Wednesdays. We're, um, we're partnering with the shellfish um, Constable and the whole Egerton Shellfish Department to do um, our saltwater Wednesdays. So we'll be um, learning how to open oysters and then quahogs, and then we'll go back to oysters and back to quahogs for the next four months. So, um, and then if you guys remember, if any of you came to it, we did scallops in the winter. So that's going to be the sort of plan, just to sort of keep you guys interested. While we're not doing saltwater Wednesdays, we'll be cooking. So it's kind of we'll flip flop back and forth. So in the fall, do expect to see Chef Look Cooks back. I already have a series planned out. I've got um, two or three of my dishes already set together and it's something we haven't done before. Um, What's the theme? Yeah, I was gonna say, so it's something we haven't done before um, and it's something that's very much appropriate to the uh, the colder season coming into play. But I'm obviously, I can't tell you what it's gonna be because that would break tradition. Um, but you can you can imagine, um, I, I'll tell you what I'm going to need. I'm, I'm going to need my, uh, my, little, uh, my little cooktop and I'm probably going to need one of my deeper pots, but that's where we'll keep it um, for there. And um, otherwise, guys, thank you so much for coming. And um, I'll see you guys all in the fall for some, uh, some really warm and hearty treats. <laughs>